Starfleet may be an exploratory organisation, but in many elements it's run with military originating inspirations. Starfleet does have minimum health requirements for its serving officers and routine fitness checks. This is for practicality's sake. For example, exploring the barren surface of a rocky planet is going to require some hiking, and of course there's always the unfortunate threat of an alien skirmish. Hi, Rick here and today I'm looking at the physical conditioning that Starfleet candidates and even crews have to go through as far as we know. This video was inspired by the Kirk Fu Manual that is being published by Insight Editions and written by Dayton Ward, who has also written a long list of other Star Trek works. I was sent a copy to examine and it's quite a light-hearted read, and I'll touch on it later. So, we know for a fact that there are Starfleet minimum health requirements that need to be cleared in order to serve within the organisation, especially when you wish to serve aboard a Federation starship. Those aboard an interstellar vessel are more likely to encounter various environments and hazards than someone who simply wishes to operate in a research lab on a core world. They no doubt also have different bars for different species to meet. Your standard Vulcan, for example, is going to be able to run a mile in a faster time than your average Tellarite, and you wouldn't ask an Elysian to deadlift much weight in Earth gravity. These requirements seem to be far more lax than the military organisations, which vary from country to country but often require a lengthy timed jog and several minutes of continuous exercises such as sit-ups and push-ups, and this makes sense for a combat oriented role such as security, but is it really wise to expect the same qualifications from someone who is just going to be a data analyst? Well, let's look at what we know is included in training at Starfleet Academy. There is a physical training centre based in Massiel, France on Earth, and likely many other such dedicated locations throughout Starfleet training planets. Tom Paris mentions his training at one of these. The curriculum at Starfleet Academy on any of its installations includes numerous fitness courses, and these are likely mandatory, probably again with variation on species. We've seen courses labelled Field Training, Field Study and Self-Defence, showing that combat readiness and drills are indeed taught to all cadets to prepare them for hostile situations and drill them to react accordingly. But not just for combat readiness. We also see survival training, survival strategies, and even specifics such as desert and arctic survival, emergency medical, and spelunking. These are more environmental and situational skills than skirmish orientated, but likewise would require a certain level of physical readiness and health. Some of these events included experiences such as being dropped off in a forest with no warning and told to survive. Every cadet too needs to complete a six-week spacewalk course in their third year and undergo rigorous zero-gravity training. There is also the infamous 10km challenge, which involves running various terrains with a weighted pack, and then going for a 10km run. In lieu of a training course, this could be conducted aboard a starship, as former instructor Lieutenant Tuvok demonstrated in the Delta Quadrant. The purpose of such rigorous testing is to present the cadets with the knowledge that they are more than likely to end up in a variety of situations, as even habitable M-class planets can vary wildly in their temperature, atmospheric composition and gravity. So on top of this, training was often completed in micro and increased gravity situations to expose trainees to various climates. So it seems that there is a base level of fitness and health required to enter Starfleet, then that is used to further temper the cadets through general training, so that when they graduate they are probably the healthiest they've ever been and have been briefed on how to respond to a variety of situations. Like many courses at the academy, there are many advanced classes that can be pursued, such as advanced self-defence, specific hand-to-hand -hand combat and extra survival courses. These would be selected courses that the cadet would choose based on their desired career path and then be presented alongside numerous other courses, scientific, medical, tactical, command, diplomatic, cultural and so on. Alongside this, there were also numerous extracurricular activities, many of which were sports and melee orientated, such as human boxing and wrestling, or Vulcan Susmana. While these sorts of hobbies 
were completely optional, it was recommended and encouraged for a cadet to pursue some interests outside of vocational related ones, and I don't need to explain why someone who may wish to serve in Starfleet security may want to study a few extra fighting styles, although I imagine many of these would be touched upon in courses such as advanced self-defence anyway. Although Benjamin Sisko, for example, followed the engineer's path but was also captain of the wrestling team in 2351, while Chakotay was a promising boxer before he graduated. Upon graduation and assignments to a starship, it seems things change somewhat. A ship's medical personnel are responsible for the welfare of the crew, and part of that does mean holding them to a physical standard. In the 23rd century, all Starfleet crew members were expected to undergo a medical physical examination to ensure that their level of health and fitness continued to remain above Starfleet minimums. By the 24th century, however, these were conducted annually. This may have had something to do with the increase in crew complements and civilian presence aboard the vessels, and I'd even speculate the higher level of comfort that the Federation found itself enjoying in this time. If a person failed to meet the minimum, they would be advised by the medical staff on how to improve or have any condition treated, and then a follow-up examination established to ascertain if they had achieved that goal. I suppose if they continued to fail, then chances are they may be reassigned from interstellar duty to somewhere else that didn't expect as much action. On board a starship, there were also gymnasium facilities and, of course, the holodecks that would have been used by the crew to maintain their fitness, and it doesn't seem uncommon to witness personnel out for a jog on deck. Maintaining their level of health beyond the academy was seemingly completely on the shoulders of the individual, so long as they continued to pass the minimum Starfleet requirements. Many ships ended up, and encouraged to, develop their own off-duty events and classes where experienced individuals could share their knowledge, such as Lieutenant Wolf's Mock Borough Sessions, where he taught beginners and advanced classes on the Klingon Tai Chi style combat. Many crew members would take such classes to stay fit, to socialise, or to learn. Of course, much of this training is centred not only around bettering yourself, but aiding others too. The Starfleet mandate is to explore the unknown and protect the Federation, which means that one of the underlying reasons for your own physical and mental well-being is not just for you, but so that others can rely on you too and you can support your crew when needed. On a starship, it's just you and your crew out in that black, so it's really just about teamwork. Overall, the level of physical readiness required to serve on a Starfleet vessel seems to be based heavily around survival of different climates, and the imparting of some basic melee combat skills. If your chosen vocation increases the likelihood of regular exertion, then the bar to meet that physicality rises, with the more military aspects of Starfleet probably requiring the harshest standards. That being said, sometimes you really do gotta punch an alien that's trying to eat you. Hence, the more advanced classes that are optional but highly recommended. And this is where the most omnipotent, fearsome and deadly form of martial arts comes in, Kirk Fu. I said I'd give a shout out to this book as it was what inspired this topic, and it was a fun little read. It's written from Kirk's in-universe point of view with excerpts from his personal log about the numerous fisticuffs he finds himself engaged in throughout the original series. And I especially enjoy the added Starfleet analysis portions that simply cannot comprehend how on earth any of these techniques worked, and the fact that the final outcome for every technique appears to be a torn shirt. So, thanks for sending that my way, and thank you for watching this video. So I'm curious then, what would you consider a Starfleet minimum requirement for entry, and am I the only one that uh, wants to try the 10km challenge? even though I know I probably fail. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you for the next lore, game or theory video, and until then, I've been Rick. Goodbye.